Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to show you guys another tower defense map uh, that I've been playing on Warcraft 3. And it's actually also one of my personal favorites and it's called UTD. And I'm basically going uh, to... Sorry, I'm, get, I'm basically going to explain to you guys why I really like this game and why there's tons of replayability in it. So first off, as you can see here, or as you can see here um, tons of things on the loading screen itself. Essentially, you have a builder. Your builder kind of decides the style of play, like play style you're gonna do. Uh, and I'm gonna pick the modes here. So standard modes you'll find hosted on Battle.net are Never Ending, which is 240 rounds. Build with Upgrade, I don't recommend either of these other ones. Uh, medium difficulty, and that's gonna set the game up. And then uh, I'm gonna put no hints. So you've got a bunch of different builders that you can see all throughout here. And each one of the different builders, you can see with between this main tavern, this little thing of crates, uh, this one over here, I think there's even, I forgot this one. Each one of them does something pretty impactful. Um, whether it goes from item find to spell power to bonus against flying creeps, all the way ranging to characters like, for example, Maverick, who allows you to only have a couple towers, but crazy buffs those towers, all the way to things like Barbarian Warlord, which is pretty much anti-caster, um, and Sorceress, which would be like the opposite, and then you have things like Naga Time Twister, which is actually my per personal favorite, uh, which is a trigger-based build, which is basically all procs. So I don't know if this is going to work because I'm hosting this in LAN, but uh, UTD actually has a save and load code, uh, saved under UTD. I don't think it's going to allow me to save, but as long as I can load for you, that's kind of all that really matters to show you. Cool, let lets me load. Uh, so we're going to play this really unique character that I don't recommend called Sniggles the Backpacker. And his bonus is he's all about he's all about kind of like item manipulation. Um, items are a big part in UTD. So we're going to go ahead and pick him. Now the elements I'm going to go ahead and pick for this setup are going to be Nature and Darkness. Uh, for beginners, honestly, there's so many different things you can play. I recommend everything for beginners except for Darkness. Uh, I think darkness is like kind of the, one of the more complex elements. Um, and really, if you want to just learn the game, you got to just keep on playing and throwing yourself at it, figuring out towers. So this is the Keeper of Wisdom, which you don't have access to unless you've played and loaded. Every time you get a level on your character, you get one point on your Keeper of Wisdom, and this is what saves with you. So for this, we're going to level up our attack speed. So that's eight points of attack speed. We're going to get attack damage. We're going to be trigger based as well. Now, this is for all of your towers. Uh, and we're going to go item find, and then the last one, we're going to go crit and two food. And we're going to get our starting towers. So by distributing my points evenly into nature and darkness, uh, it's going to roll my towers. So I'm going to click get starting towers. So this is your common stash. This is your uncommon rarity. Uh, and then you have unique, and that's kind of the tower grid. It doesn't mean that one is necessarily better than the other. It's it's just, I mean, it does kind of, but it's mainly just more on like uh, the rarity of the tower itself. So we're gonna do zoom 300. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna play the Thief Apprentice. You can see all of his bonuses. TLDR, uh, Thief gains item chance and item quality, which is what we're looking for. You can also build these things called range checkers. They're really nice, especially if you're kind of inexperienced with Warcraft 3, they'll kind of teach you the range of towers. So this is 800, uh, what is this one here? This one is, okay, so we actually wanna put him like here, is it? We might actually leak this because I took a little bit to explain. This is okay. I'm gonna put him right here where this range checker is. You also play your own progression, so I'm gonna be pumping these rounds pretty fast to show you some gameplay. Each tower has an attack type. You can see the armor type over here. There's different styles. So for example, one boss means it's one target that's coming out, it's a boss. Five air would be five flying. Uh, 20 mass, one boss, six normal, two cha, cha is champion, which is just a stronger version of a normal unit. Uh, white is your standard rare, and then or white is the first item tier, and then blue is the next item tier. Then it goes yellow, and then it goes purple. Now, because I'm playing Sniggles the Backpacker, uh, Sniggles has a pretty big downside. And the downside with Mr. Sniggles is that towers can only use... And remember, he's the only character in this game with this downside. Towers can only use their rarity of item. So this blue tower can only use blue items. Yellow or white can only use white. Uh, and it's a pretty interesting downside compared to most characters. 
Your towers also level and will gain experience, and as you progress through rounds, you're going to get force points to spend. Force points you use to spend on elements. The more you spend on an element, the more likely you are to get the higher tiers. So we have Blunderbuss and I... These are pretty garbage. There is a Cube of Ancients over here. A Haradra Cube. By playing Sniggles, we get access to three new recipes, which you don't really have to worry about right now. Um, the common recipes are four oils can combine into a higher tier. Um, also, you can do three items of the same tier. So three Y items can be re-rolled into a higher tier. Items have item levels. And that's also, I think, potentially influenced by rarity. Uh, if not, maybe it's just the level of the round that you're on. So, oils are permanent and will go on a tower and scale with it. That's what these are. Um, oils are extremely strong and it's pretty much how you get into endgame. If you put oils on a tower, and you replace the tower with another tower, the oils will transfer over. Now this is a challenge round that comes every so-and-so levels. There's a single target challenge and a mass challenge. We're gonna be leaking this. If you leak a challenge, it's totally okay. It's very- it's extremely normal to leak challenge rounds. So I'm gonna be pulling my oils out. This little pen here is for the recipes. Every time you click this to try to do the recipe, it'll pull from the pen. So if you don't have anything in the pen, then that just means that it's not pulling from the recipe, that's all. If you like, pull them out. We also got Purifying Gloves, which is a really, really good item at the beginning of the game. Problem with it is that uh, I can't use it because I'm Sniggles and I have to have a yellow tier tower. Now by playing the mode Random with Upgrade, which is the one that I recommend, you lose the ability to upgrade towers whenever you want, um, and they're limit or they're locked by level, like level requirements. So you can see here, this guy can't upgrade until level 11, which is one of our one of our main towers that's killing. Now, one other benefit to Sniggles, and this one's pretty important, so you guys understand, is Sniggles, our hero. Um, also gains one extra inventory slot to all towers, which means his baby towers are stronger than most if they have proper items on them. And if you get a tower to level 25, which is max, it gets six extra slots. The reason why that's important is it means a yellow tower goes from five to six, and a white tower goes from four to six. And items can be extremely strong in this game. What is this one here? This is a voodoo doll, it's attack speed per level. I'm going to show you guys a recipe right now. We're going to take these three items here. And I'm going to go ahead and combine them up. And we got pillage tools, so you can see the conversion was an uncommon one. Um, this is really shit to be honest, I don't care about bounty at all. The reason why I'm not using these oils yet is because I'm waiting for like... I kind of like to wait and see because tower positioning is really important, especially if you play the way I play. Um, so I'm going to save my oils to make sure that I have a tower in the right position before I use them. I'm going to upgrade this guy. He's really good at mass rounds. So we're looking for a tower called Skink. Uh, Skink is going to be an extremely strong tower that we place down. And it grants an aura to all towers, but I don't want to spoil it too much, so let's see if we can get it. Well, I guess I may as well just tell you ahead of time. The aura, every time a tower attacks that's affected by the aura, it applies a poison on the target based off of the skink spell damage modifiers. If you click a tower and you hit the tower info, you can see everything about the tower, even like the builder effects. So if you look, for example, over here at Sniggles, the backpacker, Sniggles has 40% item quality. You can see all of my towers have that 140% item quality ratio. This pulls the breakdown from attack all the way to the attacks per second, overall damage per second, crit chance, crit damage, multi-crit, damage with crit, spell damage, all of your misc stats, which includes trigger, which is proc chance and everything else. So support column's a good item. It's magic find and mag or item find and item chance. With Sniggles, the reason why I'm looking for so much item find is because we need to find items to uh, kind of recycle them to get higher tier ones so that we can continue using specific towers. 
Uh, this is a mass challenge. We're most likely going to be leaking most of this. We're really looking for a skank right about now. I'm going to give this guy uh, old crystal ball, which is item chance. Let's next round it. Mm, don't need that. So I'm going to put here and here because our skink is going to go right here. Blessed Holy Scepter. So we're gonna take the Pillage Tools, the Holy Scepter. Yeah, and let's tear these up. And we got Dowsing Rod, which is actually crazy. It's uh, <clears throat> minus damage, minus spell damage, and plus item chance. And we got a Skink, two Skinks actually. So I'm gonna place Skink down right here. I'm also gonna upgrade the Skink, and I'm, I'm gonna give him the Dowsing, well, I guess I'll wait first. So now what we're going to do as well is I'm going to take these tombstones, place a tombstone here and a tombstone here, hit next round, uh, rooted chasm and tree stump. So chasm over here, stump here. So what I just did right now is I placed this skink down in the middle and you can see that all of these towers here have this little icon. This is the poisonous attack from the skink. So if I hover over him, it tells you you can basically read, like, what it is. And every time you hit the target, it'll refresh the poison. Skink upgrades at level 31. Five for one is also another recipe. What that is, is essentially, uh... Also, I'm gonna give this to Skink. What it is, is uh, you can take five items of a tier, combine them up for another tier. Speed Demon's Reward gives them XP as long as you're playing quickly. Can we upgrade Cactus? Let's upgrade Mr. Cactus. Skink should kill that with the poison. Yep. So this will show you the power of the skink poison right here. See the chunks? That's the skink poison. So skink is already like catching up to this dude. So strange item is a really interesting item because what it does is uh, it's strange. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, strange item is a unique item because it's used as item fodder. Uh, you can read it duplicates itself and you can use it as a white item for a recipe. Don't you have crystallized scales, actually? Here, I'll trade this, this up. Demonic orb is spell crit damage. Now, there's another interesting part about this game. So you can't really always do the same thing. And whenever you play through the game, you're gonna have different things. You're gonna have different towers. You're gonna have different elements if you choose to play different elements. Uh, the rounds are always randomized. And you have rounds that are immune. Um, immune rounds literally mean that they're immune. So if you're pure spell damage, you can't kill it. Uh, and the reason for that is they try to make the game a little bit more interesting. And the item complexity is cr pretty crazy. You have conversion items, like you can convert physical damage to spell damage via items. Part of the reason why I don't upgrade all my towers as well is I want to focus it so certain towers get the kills for my item find bonus and for my XP bonuses. Okay, good skink leveled up. Hunting map is a good item. That's uh, item chance and XP gain. 
Now, something else you can do that's pretty cool is there are commands in the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do AO Sork and AO... I don't remember what the other one is called. So what AO Sork does is it sets up auto oils for sorcery. So instead of the oils of sorcery flying over here, they're just going to shoot right onto the skin. Oh. Seek Seekers. There we go. Seekers is item find oil, which applies in an AoE as well. Alright, so Skink is getting most of the kills. It might be time to change already. And we got Cursed Grounds. Cursed Grounds doesn't help too much at the moment. I also have another tower leveling over here. I've been leveling up my... I've been spam upgrading my growing plant because baby plant or growing plant in general, its specialty is XP gain. Uh, and I wanted to get kills because we're going to replace it with another tower, like a support tower. And support towers... Uh, for the most part, don't really get XP unless that's how, you know, they're meant to work as a support. Um, so it's really important to get levels for it so we can automatically get a level, you know, a max level tower, for example, or like a level 14 support tower when we replace it. Alright, we're gonna do five for one recipe here. I don't need anything here. We got another dousing rod. That that's like I know it said unlucky conversion, but I promise you that's a lucky conversion for us. <laughs> that's an extremely lucky conversion. Gonna take this one, this one, and tiny rabbit. Goodbye, Mr. Tiny Rabbit. Convert up. And we got 18% item chance? Oh my goodness, there is a god. He does exist. So think of how crazy this would be. Normally, this skink would have two items right now if I wasn't playing Backpacker, the Snigger, like Mr. Sniggles. If this tower was level 25, I could have item find, item find, item find, item find, item find on him right now. Which would mean that I would start like my item find so early compared to everyone else that would be playing. Uh, and the scaling could potentially be ridiculous. It's all based off RNG though. Do we ever get, um, hmm. I don't really want anyone in here. What is this one? Magic file. Isn't that buff duration? Buff duration is pretty good for Skink. It actually increases his damage because it's, uh, a, it's considered a buff when he attacks enemies. Thirty-nine is complete. So at fifty he upgrades. Forty-two he upgrades. That means just in case we're gonna upgrade some other towers because we need a little bit more damage. Bloodthirsty Wheel of Fortune is a complete RNG item. Nice. All right, Skink, show me the magic find, buddy. Let me see the loot. That's it? That's all you give me? That was a challenge round, dude. <laughs> we did get one support tower here. Uh, regenerating well is a pretty nice support for spell casters. Uh, it gives like spell damage, but cursed grounds, I'm pretty sure Chance on attack to slow the target, deal spell damage, and the target receives increased spell damage. And also grants bonus damage against Orc Nature. Stunner is one of my favorite items because we are going to be playing a trigger build. Uh, trigger essentially means proc chance. Uh, this is an item that scales off of proc chance, and it's going to be used really soon. Well, whenever we get our, our tower. We're gonna be looking for a tower called Inexperienced Huntress. Let me put this here. Can we do four combo? Um, I'll keep food. Food is good. Alright, let's... Actually, I'm gonna leave these alone completely. Mm. 
Actually, let's do it. We're doing we're doing a YOLO combo. So this is a combo from Sniggles. It's like really RNG. Uh, essentially, what Sniggles can do is he can take six consumables, which are extremely valuable. Um, but they are just tier one for the recipe that I'm doing. But still, they're extremely valuable. And we can take all six of these and convert them into an item rarity two tiers higher, which is a yellow of any item level. So I could potentially get the best yellow item in the game or something that is like literally less valuable than a turd. So here we go. We got something really high level that's not very useful to us right now. It uh, reduces debuff duration, which is actually pretty good. Because what debuff duration is, is you'll get these rounds later in the game that I'll say like stun revenge. And every time your tower attacks, you know what happens? It gets fucking stunned in the face. So if you just have a single carry tower and it's trying to kill 20 mobs, it's going to get chain stunned over and over. So debuff duration is not bad to have. And it doesn't have to go on our main tower, right? Because if you read it, for example, it says level bonus 1% debuff duration. So if I had a level 25 support tower, this would give 35% debuff duration. Another demonic orb. Okay, we're gonna level up our cactus because we have a mass a mass boss round incoming. Or not mass boss, sorry, we have a mass challenge round incoming. So he upgrades at 50, so we should just wait. Oh, I have force field. Ge oh wait, that is force field generator. Never mind. Whoops, thought of the wrong tower. I think I'm gonna replace the growing plant with cursed grounds as well. I think it's about time we get like someone else in here, so we're gonna do that. Oh, just kidding. Need more force points. Oh, actually, let's get skink level 50 first on this next round. We'll get the upgrade, and then we'll do it. I have an immune round coming soon, too. Okay. There's the skink upgrade. We're gonna give him... Honestly, you should just give that to him. So he can have both of them. Inexperienced Huntress. Okay, so that is our main tower. Um, the thing is, though, is if I switch right now, remember the way that Backpacker works? I would lose all my item... Not all my item find, but... I pretty much lose my item find because all of my item find items are blue. So we kind of need to, like, stall until we can get to that point. Um, so let's see what we can do here. 54 is coming up. It's an immune round. Um, Alright, let's see what we got here. Let's focus you. We're gonna leak some, I think. Focus you. Actually, we got him. Nice. Divine Oil of Sorcery. That's awesome right now. Okay. So, let's do 5 combo. That's garbage. Let's do 5 combo. We're gonna take these 5 and turn them into a yellow. 35% uh, damage, but it has a chance to slow my tower. That's, that's like, mmm. I mean, the thing is, actually, what's interesting is that if my tower gets stunned, that's considered debuff. And I have force field generator for debuff duration, so liquid gold is actually pretty good. Um, and I have two liquid golds? Okay, this is interesting. So two liquid golds and a stunner. Wait, I have two stunners? Oh my goodness, this is pretty crazy. Alright. Here's the air magic immune. We should also put down that curse grounds. Let's see where the curse grounds is. Curse grounds. Uh, I'm gonna put the curse grounds over here so that I can pick it up with him. And I'm gonna level him up. And we're gonna give him the... Where is he? Uh, take the force field generator. Okay. 
Let me give you... Where is it? Where's strange item? There it is. And I have another strange item, actually, that I can hold, too. Strange item. Oops, where is it? Here it is. So as you can see, the item find shit is being pretty obnoxious right now. Uh, with all the stuff that we're finding. Let's see. Minecart, minecart. These are gonna be tiered up later. Four, four yellows makes an epic. Remember that. Even with consumables, four makes an epic. So, let's take four oils here. Uh, I really like crit, so crit stay over here. Attack speed, go on the attack speed pile. He's gonna die. Let me see this loot pile. Oh, the crit! Chunk! Oh my, the loot! It's another yellow. Okay, I was getting excited. I wasn't even upgrading here. Attack speed goes here. Attack speed goes here. Attack speed there. Uh, I don't need these oils. These four I can tear up. And we got attack speed. Perfect. Minecart over here. Let's Sacred Altar. Alright, Sacred Altar is actually overpowered as well. What Sacred Altar does is it's kind of like Skink, except instead of it being like poison, it has a chance for all towers to entangle. So as a support tower, this tower is pretty crazy, but it needs XP. It doesn't need XP, but XP definitely helps it a lot. Sixty-six. Looks like we're stalling pretty well. Okay, item chance. One, two, three, four, five. I just got a dumpster. Dumpster is another really crazy item. Uh, I'm gonna keep this dumpster for item find, actually. for a little bit we have another book so my strategy what I do if you guys are curious on my oils I'm kind of like picky with them I almost never you I pretty much never use force points uh, so I always hold my force points swiftness is damage I keep it crit is damage I keep it damage is damage so I keep it income is garbage I always tear it up food is really valuable but uh, I don't know. It's, it's it's up and down whether or not I keep it. I usually use it, but if I'm doing something kind of niche, then I'll use it. Um, XP gain is garbage unless you have towers that really need the XP. So I usually tear that up for more, like, more damage. But uh, everything is subjective, right? Especially, like, because I'm playing Sniggles, the entire game is, like, different because I'm playing Sniggles. Uh, Nerubian Queen, I'm not going to use her, but I'm pretty sure that she is a carry. Also, we got more item chance by another Enchanted Telescope. So this is a four combo I can do. Um, this is actually crazy. So if I get a bad yellow, then I get I get an epic, and here's why. So I'm gonna take these four blue, tear it up, and we got a good one. If it was bad, I could combine it with my mine cards. Move him over. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm actually gonna give the landmine to the cactus for damage Since it's a pretty big that's like 25% Yeah, 20% I don't know what the hell that is that I just found. What is this? Oh this thing? I don't actually like this thing very much. I'm probably gonna roll those three up Oh, oh second chance is a bitch it has a chance to come back to life Got him Mass challenge. Mass challenge will most likely be a leak, unfortunately, but that's okay. 66. Just need nature 13. Mine leecher is good. Mine leecher allows uh, support towers to level. On the next immune round, I'm probably going to replace her with Huntress. But I will lose a shit ton of item finds, so I'm not sure if I'm really ready to do that. Let's next round it. Tick, tick, tick. 
that just say another dumpster? I think that's another dumpster. <gasps> dumpster times two. All I gotta do is get him to 25. Which is next level. Okay, he leveled to 25. So we're gonna go ahead and give him dowsing rod and then dumpster times two. Oopsies. Where do those dumpsters go? Here they are. Now there is diminishing returns on items or like magic on like actually everything there's diminishing returns. But just to show you what we have now, our item quality is 60% which is shit because of the dumpsters. But we have 252% item find chance. I'm pretty sure that's like really bad though because we're so negative. Let me see. Let me remove just like one thing. Yeah, we'll keep it like that. That's much better. Uh, we did get a magic mushroom. I'm pretty sure magic mushroom is a carry, but I don't really know how to carry with it, so I'm not going to use it. I'm going to reroll these three items and hope add something better. And this is okay. This gives us uh, crit as nature, right? That's alright. Even though Huntress does get guaranteed crit, it's okay. Here's another oil. Okay, next next yellow, I think. We'll just try to convert and I'll show you Huntress. We'll speed the game up a little bit. Lich mask is garbage. Lich mask turns your changes your damage type, which is realistically like not bad, but that's how I feel. Now remember, we are sacrificing quite a bit of skanks damage to do this because. We literally have, like, no damage items. We're full magic fine, but it's working. Chunk. 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 All whites. Okay. I think that it's time to get ready. So here we go. Replacing it with Huntress now. Let me show you guys some fun, fun, fun. Uh, Huntress, let's see, is right here. So I'm gonna take the Huntress, and because Skink's hitbox is really whack, I'm gonna just put it. Okay, give me a second. In the inventory, like that. I'm gonna level up Huntress to max. Well, it was already max, but here we go. And let's pick up these four. Well, I don't really need the Lich Mask, but I can keep it for now. And now you'll see the Huntress doing some work. Um, no more Skink. But also, what I need to do is I need the Bone Shrine. So, or the Sacred Altar. Let's see. Oh, I just got a Hall of Souls. You know what that means? That means that I'm actually not going to use this right now. And instead, I'm going to take the Hall of Souls and put it where I want the Altar, which would be here. So what a Hall of Souls is, is Hall of Souls will collect the, like the, basically it gets XP whenever the uh, enemies die, automatically. So we're gonna level, we're gonna use this thing to level up, and then we're gonna replace it with the Sacred Altar. Um, so now we need to oil up our Huntress really badly because she's weak, so 5,000 damage, let's oil her. 
Oil up, baby. 7,000. Time for some attack speed. Oh, this is an invis round, so we need to stay, like, right here. To make sure we don't mess this up now, we do AO, sor uh, AO speed, because it has Sork. AO crit and AO sharp. Alright. Let's grab these yummy oils over here. And use them. There we go. So now we can look uh, at the stats here. And this is a Lua round, so it's gonna like die instantly. Also, to show you guys what Huntress does, whenever this tower attacks, that has a 20% chance to gain 200% attack speed. It's the next round. 200% um, attack speed until the next attack. The next attack will also crit for sure, dealing 75% more crit damage. And then you can see the level bonus. Uh, whenever this tower attack damages a creep, there's a 25% chance to deal 45% of the attack damage as spell damage. Meaning all the spell damage oils we stacked on the skink carried over, and my attack gets added as spell damage. And then we get bounce as well, multi-shot, which is really good because as a single carry, you need to make sure you can hit, like, more than one target. Okay, so now we're gonna do five here, combine. This is the strongest spell damage item in the game for crit, but the problem with an item like that... I'll show you very shortly, once I do some combinations here. Let's see how much damage she does here. Go get him, Huntress! This is a challenge round. Challenge rounds uh, are very tanky. Mind Leecher? Isn't that the second Mind Leecher? That's a- yep. I don't need any more Mind Leechers. Okay. So the problem the problem with this tower, I think I'm gonna mind leech it, or this item, is that uh, it would reduce my spell crit, and I don't have any spell crit, because, like, yeah, so it would actually go negative. Uh, just to show you an example. Um, so my current spell crit chance is 15%, but I have times 2.2. If I put this on, I go to negative 25, but I go to, you know, times 9, I just can't really ever crit. So, uh, let's, anyway, we're gonna put this over here. And tome it up. Maybe I should actually keep, keep one like this. Every fifth hit is a crit. Now, I'm told, um, that Mithril Hammer is actually really strong because... When you have multi-crit, I don't know exactly how multi-crit works, but I think Mithril Hammer always rolls the highest multi-crit, and we'll be getting multi-crit soon. Okay, let's go back here to where we were. Uh, combine up. I don't like this. Combine up. Uh, bounty of Garbo. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Sometimes you play grounds a little too fast. Go get him, Huntress! Don't, not like this, not like this. Okay, we actually leaked some, so that was uh, extreme speed, I think. Oh, guess what we have, actually? One, two, three, four combo. So the best things we can get are, um, in my opinion, pure aether, which is a, a, like an epic tier consumable. Uh-oh. And instead, also, if we can't get pure aether, our next, like, next thing would be... Tier of the Gods. If we get consumable Hobbit, Hobbit F for uh, pay respects. Fucking Hobbit, dude! I don't need force points or income. Get out of here, dude. God damn it. I jinxed myself. Okay, this claw is good. It's just straight damage. Um, What's your crit chance? 20%? I think I'll drop a stunner. I don't think I'm going to stunners. I'll actually, I can keep this stunner, I'll just put it on a different tower. So we're gonna, this hobbit is pretty much shit, we're gonna wait to try to, actually it's not shit, it's just like, it doesn't really do anything for me right now. Somehow we used the, we got an oil, but like we used it, so what? Take these, tear them up. We got buff duration. Oh, that's actually not bad because... Did we ever get... No, we didn't. Um, dude, the stunner procs. Do you see this? We're going to use a nature sprites and put it here. And we're going to give it this item to buff. Uh, so now we're going to do something like... It's called add one. 
and then set one. And what that's going to do is that's going to make this tower, our nature sprites, constantly buff this tower for the rest of his existence. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, tier up into Essence of Rot. This one's an interesting one because uh, it decreases the attack speed of all towers, but increases the attack and spell damage taken by creeps. And I'm pretty sure that this double dips, so even though it hurts my towers, I'm going to use it. Every fifth time... I don't need this at all. These can probably get tiered up into another stunner. Um, okay. You got a lot of stunners. It's next one. Another inexperienced hunters. But we don't really need another one because we already have, you know, the one that we need. Oh, is this, uh... Is this like an extreme... This may be an extreme evasion. I wasn't paying attention. Extreme evasion rounds are very unfun because uh, they like to evade. All the time. Forever. And if you leak a boss, it's a lot of lives lost. Okay, cool. We killed the boss. Although I leaked like like a lot of that round. But it's okay. We killed the boss. Uh, another strange item. I don't really think I need more... Oh yeah, I forgot I had purifying gloves. Like, I got these like a long time ago. And we got a tier of the gods. That is extremely lucky. I'm pretty sure purifying gloves made you like some crazy stunning, actually. Um, let's try to get the kills on here. Good. Okay. Tier of the gods. Uh, increases base damage, crit chance, crit damage, and multi-crit. So directly to you. And I think maybe I'm going to remove, like, I don't know. I don't think I want this flat crit. As much as I like the flat crit, I'd rather just rely on the proc. So I'll give her the purifying gloves to see how much they proc. It's really obvious when they proc. It's, it's that shiny ray of light that we'll see happen in a second. That right there. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Let's see, let's see how much it, like, decides to proc, though. Also, how are you doing? You're level 19. You're doing pretty well, buddy. Coconut sap. Coconuts are really good for slumming. Um, I'm actually going to take two of them right now. Put one where... Guess where this dude is. Wait, very slow attack speed? Oh, that's really bad for trying to proc stuff, actually. I just realized that because of because of that other thing that I have, it's like fucking everyone's attack speed up, which is whatever. It's just making it like a Huntress carry. That's still all right. Now, this dude's 21. I think it's time to replace him with Sacred Altar. I'm pretty sure that Dreadlord is another crazy carry as well, but... Where is Sacred Altar? Actually, yeah, like, literally, like, where is Sacred Altar? I don't even know where it is. Hello? I thought I placed it here. Oh, here it is. Sacred Altar. Alright, so we're gonna put this instead of Citadel of Souls. All towers in a 175 range will receive a gift of nature. When a gifted tower attacks a creep, there's an attack speed adjusted chance to entangle it. Alright, let's see what we have here. Five combo. Five combo. Another essence of rot. Okay. No more essence of rot, please. No more essence of rot, please. So ethereal rounds are dicks because of that. Need some slowers or more like procs or spell damage. So you guys have seen like most of how the game works. I'm gonna like mass these rounds here and uh, see what happens. I'm gonna start playing on like steroids, boys. Here we go. <clears throat> Let's upgrade everything that we need to. 
Lunar Emitter is okay, but we ideally would want an Astral Emitter because of... Yeah, oh, Lesser Wolves then is really good. Lesser Wolves then actually gives attack speed to everybody. We're gonna replace this shit Turk Thief Master with it. Or actually, no, we shouldn't. Let's replace the Cactus with it. Because I would like to put uh, Scenarius here to reduce some more attack speed. Can we stun him? Oh, actually, I should probably kill it. Okay, now we'll kill him. Are you kidding me? Village Witch. So, sometimes, actually, I guess I got Village Witch before. Sometimes it's really, like, unlucky to get something, like a blue tower like this, but Village Witch is crazy strong because she has a, a debuff she uses, which is called Love Potion, which increases their item find. yellows we can get another like combine up four oils so hmm, I'm actually I'm not gonna do the four oil though because I want to go for the yellow yellow item yellow, yellow item this should be a pretty fast round it's immune and I have crazy high fist damage yep. So this is why I say I don't really care for incoming, because gold after a certain point is, like, useless. Because you can only build as much towers as you have food. Um, so yeah. Don't really see a point for incoming in this game. Next round. Beast Head. I think Beast Head is actually, like, crazy strong, isn't it? 1,430 DPS. That's actually, like, crazy strong, yeah. Considering if I... yeah. But that doesn't really help right now at all. But it's nice to have. High item level. So, Nevermind's Eye, or I guess this one gives True Sight. Normally I don't care about True Sight, but... Um, it's it's kind of nice to have on like a support tower, just so you can never fuck yourself over on a this round. But I'm probably just going to combine it up with these three here. And we got Enchanted Mining Pit, which is broken because it's an item fine. So I'm going to scrap the purifying gloves, reduce her damage, and get more item find because that's more fun. Item find is like fun find, right? I'll put the purifying gloves on this dude. Actually, you should like take this and this and like get ready to combine up. So one more... Yellow makes a combined one, two, three. We can almost make one. You go over here. Next round. You can go there. I think we got something that I wanted actually. What was in here? Soul Vault has a chance to lock a target's unit's soul, letting it suffer more spell damage. This tower reduces armor. Soul Vault looks pretty cool. Let's try it. Where should we put it? I don't have much space. I mean, I guess I can put it, like, where the Grand Thief Master is, but that's not really a good spot, but just to see what it does exactly. Tower has a chance to throw Acid Skull on the target, dealing 1800 damage to the main target, uh, whatever, but it reduces armor. Uh, units in a 775 range have their armor reduced by 25%. That's pretty good. This tower has a chance to lock its soul. A unit without a soul receives 50% more spell damage? Okay. So, that's pretty good. Got another Magic Mushroom. I'm actually pretty sure that Magic Mushroom can be a support tower. 
When this tower casts Mystical Trance, it deals this. Okay, applies a buff to a tower range, which increases spell damage, trigger chance, and also triggers Fungus Strike when cast. Oh, you know this is an Invis round? So speaking of those rounds that you can fuck yourself over if you don't have Invis reveal, um, that's a little bit of what I was talking about, uh, but that's okay. So we'll pull it Magic Mushroom instead of like, I guess, you. And we're gonna do set two to make him buff that tower. How many lives do we have? 50%. Oh, we can actually make a combine. So here we go. Pure Aether. Insane item for Huntress. Speed, trigger chance, buff duration, bounty, XP, item chance, item quality. And reduce the buff duration, which is really good considering we're using these stupid ass kegs. And we have enough to do the six combo for a random, a random item. Let's hope for Eternium Blade. Bloody Key. Grants 12% bonus damage against orc humanoid creeps, also increases damage per second by all towers in an AoE. So that's not bad, because I can again put it to a support tower. Oops, he has wrong support tower. Next round. We can give it to a support tower, that's level 24, and it's now pretty good. Boom. Okay. Can we do four combo here? Let's do it. Four combo into attack speed. Next round is a challenge. Here's the attack speed, buddy. Vampiric Skull. Not sure what Vampiric Skull is. Oh, that's garbage. Nice item level, like, zero. That's poo-poo. Uh, I need to, like, stop fighting this boss and start fighting the wave. Come on. Come on, towers. Good job. Uh, we got Igloo. Igloo is a slower tower from ice. Which is really nice. Nine hundred aura range would put that pretty good right over here. Reset. Reset. Minus forty-five percent debuff duration, a pretty good item. But let's combine up and see what we can get. That's again especially good because we're using two of the dum dum. Thirty-three percent trigger chance. Um, Another crazy item, because she's a full trigger build, so what's her trigger chance now? 150. Way better than what we had. Remember that trigger is basically like crit chance for Huntress, because if she triggers and she procs the attack speed buff, then she gets the automatic crit at the end. Taisha the Hermit. Now, Taisha is one of my favorite uh, heroes. Uh, I know it's not really called Taisha, but I really like her. Um, the thing is, though, is I don't have any items right now to use Taisha. But just for the sake of showing you guys, because I don't want to make this video last an hour, even though it's already been 50 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and pick up an ultimate tower right here. Oh, I need more farms. That's okay. We can just do this. All right, so I'm gonna take Taisha, okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on this tower. The thing is, though, is that it's not gonna have any items. So let's see how it is. It's a unique tower with all my oils, but it has no items. So I don't know. Oh, it looks like Taisha is still pretty good, even if no items, because oils and everything else. Uh, so let's let's make this a little fun. We're gonna take the five highest item level items. Okay, that's kind of close. And we are going to go ahead and tear it into a purple. Here we 
we go. Pendant of Mana Supremacy. A great item. The thing is, though, is we don't need mana, so it's useless. <laughs> uh, let's see. I mean, technically the Magic Mushroom can use it. damage considering it's like completely naked and we come to an end soon boys Taisha, you're supposed to go down. Taisha doesn't want to give it up. Alright then. One... <laughs> I'm trying to- I'm trying to throw right now, but it's not working, team. I want to see if there's like any way I can combine purples, but I don't think there's any way. Because uh, to combine purples up, I would need like... Well, I mean, I can. Hold on. Oh, unknown recipe. Oh, this is a purple. Whoops. So I need another blue. Okay, so give me your blue. Combine this up. That's a yellow. Whoopsies. Okay, I need a blue from someone. Who has a blue? Strange items. Strange items can make a blue. Oh, we actually killed them. Okay, make a blue, and then these blues make a yellow. Okay, and then these yellows will make another Kappa color. Hey, you, just give me, give me like force field generator. Okay, that made Excalibur, which is, I'm pretty sure, pretty good. But it says it's not very good. Minus attack speed plus crit chance. It's actually 10 flat crit chance, which is disgusting but just for the sake of showing you guys some item conversions let's go ahead put vampiric skull in here with this guy tear it up frog pipe frog pipe has a 20 percent chance on attack to summon two frogs that deal 100 percent of attack damage when they hit except the thing is that the frogs i'm pretty sure spawn look at them go do you see them dude do, do, where are they going the frogs i'm pretty sure are based off your trigger chance Oh, look, look at the little froggies, dude. I can't tell if the froggies are good or not. It's hard to tell. They're like... They're like all over the place. Okay, so that's pretty much... Oh, Circle of Power. Maybe... It, what is that item? I don't think I know what that is. Every five seconds, if the carrier of this item has less mana than it did five seconds ago, the carrier has a 25% chance to restore mana to what it was. What is all these mana things? So many mana items. Alright, we're gonna next round again if we didn't die. Still not dead. Somehow. Go. Oh my god, it's a challenge. You can't die to a challenge. Okay, next round again. Go. This is it, team. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of UTD. I personally highly recommend this game and throughout all of the tower defenses I've ever played in my life. This is by far the one that is the most frustrating, yet the most rewarding and enjoyable at the same time. There are so many different ways you can play, as I was kind of explaining in the beginning, and it's just so much fun to kind of jump out and, and try the game yourself, really. Unfortunately, I think development may have 
I don't know if it's stopped or if it's been halted, but I don't think there's been a like an actual like um, development change in I think a year and a half or so. There's also a community Discord and a bunch of other stuff, so you can always find it there. And the bot is hosted, or the game is hosted on Enterprise Gaming on Battle.net. Um, yeah, then you get your little statistics over here, which is pretty nice, and you can type dash save, but it's probably gonna say fuck you, you're playing in solo. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv box. Take care, everybody.